So we start with the BBC News from Theo Scarlatos. Atoms. Thanks, good morning. Figures obtained by Five Live Breakfast show the number of women convicted of domestic violence in England and Wales has more than doubled over the past five years. According to the Crown Prosecution Service, almost 4,000 women were successfully prosecuted in the past year, compared with fewer than 1,500 in 2005. Stephen Chittenden reports. Some say it's a sign of a growing culture of violence among women, while others believe men are now more willing to report that they've been attacked, beaten up by their wives and girlfriends than in previous years. But men do remain by far the main offenders, with the numbers convicted increasing from more than 28,000 in 2005 to just over 55,000 last year. Well, Ippo Pantelidakis is Helpline's manager at Respect, a charity supported by the Home Office, which runs a helpline for male victims. Good morning. Good morning. Dr Nicola... Graham Kevin is a psychologist at the University of Central Lancashire, an expert on, in female aggression. Uh, Dr. N uh, Graham Kevin, what do you think is going on here? Uh, regarding the figures, I think uh, it may not actually represent an increase in women's partner violence, domestic violence. Um, certainly research from 40 years ago and continuing right up to this day has found that women are equally likely to be aggressive to their partners as men. Um, I think what we're seeing is actually a greater awareness of that. Women are just as likely to be aggressive to their partners as men? Yes. The first ever uh, national survey carried out in 1975 found this, and subsequent surveys, including British crime surveys, have found um, equal numbers of men and women saying they've been victims of domestic violence. Now, depending on how you use the figures, you can say men are more likely to be victims or women, but what we know is there is a large proportion of women who use domestic violence to men and have done it for over 40 years. I I Ippo, do you buy that? I mean, certainly given that 2010 to 11, 3,968 women were convicted of domestic violence, but in the same period, 55,122 men in England and Wales. First of all, news that convictions for domestic violence-related offences offenses has increased uh, is indeed very welcome news, and it also goes some way towards uh, dispelling... I'm asking you to comment on what we just heard from Dr Nicola graham Kevin. Yeah, I mean, if we look at this report, uh, again, it doesn't really change the picture we have for domestic violence overall. The majority of domestic violence perpetrators are, are male, the overwhelming majority. But women do occasionally use violence in their intimate relationships, and indeed they do, and this is what this report is telling us. Are they just as capable of violence as men in these relationships? That's what she said. I think we are all capable. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a matter of uh, how people are, are using violence or not. And in my professional experience, the, the overwhelming majority of perpetrators are uh, male with a female victim. Dr. Graham Kevin? Well, yes. If you run a women's uh, helpline and women's shelters and uh, programs for violent men, then in your professional experience, for most of the victims will be women because you're offering a service to women. Or, or to violent men. Um, this is the problem. If you only sample from one cohort, you won't see the full picture. We are running a, a national helpline for male victims of domestic violence as well as a national helpline for all perpetrators, male and female. And this is the picture that we've been getting from approximately um, uh, 15 to 20,000 calls over the last uh, seven years. And these are real, real people telling us their real stories. What's, tell us about the spectrum, Dr. Nicola, Nicola Graham Kevin. Uh, of, of what are you talking about? The, you know, what vocabulary do you use when you're talking to people about? Well, uh, you know, is it, have you been slapped? Have you been hit? Have you been punched? Have you been knifed? What, what, tell us about that. The the measure that uh, is often used is called the conflict tactic scale, and that will ask have you been hit, slapped, mm. punched, kicked, and it, it goes down in severity to weapon use, uh, and so forth. Um, Where does it start? It starts at pushed. Right. Is is it? That is domestic violence, is it? Right? Well, right. Y you can ha you can say no, it's only more severe aggression. But when we're told by uh, feminist organisations, one in four women are a victim of domestic violence, they are using that. One in four women report that in the last year they have been pushed or slapped. You know, uh, if you want to make the definition more severe, hmm. then by all means do so. But you are there going to lose a lot of women uh, from your uh, you know from your cohort as well. What we find is, if you only look at severe aggression, women are, are still uh, using severe aggression at levels comparable to men. Ipa? 
Well, what we are finding on the men's advice line through the stories of uh, men who report as victims is that approximately one-third report no violence at all, even when we prompt them, uh, just to make sure that their awareness of what violence is is indeed correct. And on the other end of the scale, approximately 24% are on what I would class as high-risk uh, violence, and the rest are somewhere in the middle with low or medium violence. So I think it is significant that a third of male victims report uh, emotional abuse rather than physical abuse and another major difference is that the vast majority of male victims especially heterosexual victims do not report sexual abuse and I'm very well aware of the fact that they may be very uh, embarrassed to report it but there are some clear differences here on our helpline gay men reported uh, 40 41 percent of gay men who called us last year reported experiencing sexual abuse and that compares with a three and a half percent of a heterosexual men who experience some kind of sexual abuse including rape so I think there are some clear differences in the experiences of male and female victims in terms of the uh, intensity, impact and, uh, and context. Uh, Dr. Grant Kevin, are, are male victims of domestic abuse, abuse getting enough help? Uh, certainly not at the moment. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's fine to say, oh, you know, uh, we're finding that most of the people call them a helpliner. Uh, you know, women and so forth. But men have not had the information campaigns. We've not had, I've never walked by a billboard and seen a picture of a man being hit by a woman. You know, if we had to do that to bring women out, to help women, to let them fame their experience is abusive, then mm. we need to do that for men as well. Now, what sort of help they need, we, we need to ask men. But we can't just set, set up services for women and then say, oh, look, only women turn up. It doesn't work. What causes this? What's the, what, what's the root cause of it, uh, Nicola? Well, all this psychological research suggests that male and female perpetrators share very similar profiles in that they've had, you know, adverse early experiences, families where discipline was harsh or inconsistent, uh, you know, there's been drug and alcohol problems, uh, personality disorder and so forth. And the longitudinal studies, which are the best, most uh, rigorous studies you can use, fine, but men and women's risk factors are very similar. Uh, so they're actually more di uh, si uh, similar than different. Uh, and how, when women li use aggression, there's this idea that women are using it in self-defense and uh, men are, are controlling and coercive. But as you, uh, your, uh, the, the gentleman on before shows, mm -hmm. women can be controlling as well. And my research and research across the globe finds that men and women who use violence towards the partner are equally likely to be highly coercive. Uh, so it's not something just men do, it's something men and women do. Well listen, longitudinal research, of course, similar research over, over decades. Thank you very much indeed, both of you. Um, Ippo uh, Pantelidakis, a helplines manager at SPEC. Thank you, Ippo. And Dr. Nicola Graham-Kevin. Thank you. Uh, some very interesting things to say. Psychologist at the University of Central Lancashire, an expert in female aggression. You're Ian's fiancée was jailed for seven years in 2009 after being found guilty of grievous bodily harm with intent and assault. And Richard fled the home he shared with his wife and stepchildren after his wife beat him up. Good morning, Ian. Good morning. Good morning, Richard. Good morning. Thank you both so much for talking to us this morning. Um, and it takes a lot to do this, Ian, doesn't it? I mean, a lot of men just don't admit that this is happening to them. I think there certainly is. Um, men are concerned that they, they won't be believed. Why, why would a man take violence from a female when he's you know bigger stronger and uh, domestic abuse is emotional financial and uh, certainly I think there needs to be an increased understanding that domestic abuse can happen to men and women men are victims too and it's not always a two-way street is it? I mean did you ever hit her no, that, that thought never ever entered my mind mm -hmm. um, when the violence starts you actually hope that a punch, a kick, a bite, it, that will blow the um, blow the storm out because there's no way of controlling someone who is in a rage. This is very common, uh, you know, when we've done this this story before, or when I've addressed it over the years, you hear this again and again, you know, men who are, uh, you know, psychologically incapable of hitting a woman, and you because you loved her, didn't you? Oh, w without a shadow of a doubt, yes, I mean, I, I did love her, and of course, you're you're shocked that. You feel that feeling is reciprocated and uh, again before the violence erupts there's an awful lot of manipulation of relationships and control before the before the violence starts you're not uh, f fully you've, you've not got your own strength you're being mentally ground down you become isolated and, and Richard do you 
identify with what Ian just said about the manipulation of a relationship? Absolutely, 100%. There's no doubt about it that it's a progressive thing. It starts off with you being isolated from all your friends. Um, it's, it's a very slow process. I mean, I was married for 17 years. Um, and you don't realise it's happening until it's basically too late. Um, there is great difficulty in actually saying to somebody, my wife is definitely manipulating me. I mean, it's, it's just not a logical thing to say to anyone. Um, it, but it does happen. And, of course, after the manipulation and the isolation, then comes the push after the shout it's the push and then it's it's the punch and you know all that sort of thing happens in a progressive manner give it give me an idea of the psychological manipulation that preceded it um well my wife reckoned that i was being unreasonable <clears throat> it meant that every time i said something she picked a fault in it mm. um it, it made it to the point where i was starting to wonder am i really a bad person to live with even to the point where she said I needed psychological uh, help. And so I went to a psychologist who basically said to me, there's absolutely nothing wrong with me. <laughs> but, but there you go, you know, uh, you, you do something just to placate the situation. Mm. And you, uh, you just want her to be normal, you want her to be herself. Oh, and... I wanted to be back in the way it was in the first five years. Mm. And when she's on top of you, pummeling you, you just don't understand why she's doing it. And you think, you know, this isn't the person I love, this isn't the person I married, just come back to yourself. And, and did you think every time she did it would be the last time? Did you, I mean, did she apologise afterwards? Was, was she full of, oh, I'm sorry? No, I'm she never, never no? apologised. Um, she didn't hit me that often. I didn't give her the chance. For many years, I've, uh, I've given other people the advice. When the violence starts, it's time to get out. And uh, on the second occasion of the violence, I got out. It was a case of, it wasn't just my wife hitting me. Um, my son also who was 21 at the time or thereabouts. Um, he heard the noise and you know ruckus that was going on, came up to find out what was going on, saw his mum hitting me and decided I'll have some of that joined in with the sort of, I suppose, the pack instinct really. Oh, it's unbelievable. No, that's where I got most of the damage from. <laughs> that was a living hell. Well, yeah. Ian, um, when it first happened, what did you think? Well, well firstly, I was completely shocked, and uh, you actually didn't know what to do or say. No parent prepares their child for being in a violent relationship you have nothing to trade off i'd never seen violence being in a violent relationship before and she didn't apologize i just hoped after the first punch that things would stop but it would go on to get far far worse over a period of time what what was making her do it what was at the heart of it we heard earlier on from an academic that it's very often in somebody's upbringing her excuse to me was that I didn't show her enough affection. I didn't tell her that I loved her enough and I was more interested in time and relationships with my friends, which was complete nonsense. And what's the worst thing that she did to him? The worst thing she did to me from a pain point of view was that um, she'd basically said that punching me hadn't changed my level of affection I was showing and I was sat innocently reading a paper in the living room and she boiled a kettle of water and poured it over me. And whilst I was stuck to the sofa, she actually reboiled the kettle and said, "If you thought it hurt the first time, see what it's like the second time." And she re-poured it over me. I physically couldn't move. The pain was excruciating. I mean, this this is person sick. It's certainly, very difficult for me to understand what sort of human being can do that to someone. I I, I don't understand it. It's completely inexcusable. I, Ian, what do you make of that? I mean. Sorry, I do beg your pardon. Richard, what do you make of that, hearing that? I'm just glad I got out early then. Yeah. If that's the way it was going to go, I don't think she would have gone that far, but then I don't think he did either. Mm -hmm. And um, Ian, it's really, it's, it, Ian, it's really interesting what you say. The worst, when I said, what's the worst thing she did to me, and you said, the worst thing she did to me pain-wise. Sure. Because, obviously, some of the manipulation, some of the, the psychological torture was, in another way, as bad. 
Yes, I mean, uh, relationships with family and friends completely broke down. I, I now have beginning to reinvent myself as a completely new life. I lost the home that I lived in for over a decade and owned. It was, uh, I'd lost 25% of my body weight. It was every possible aspect, financial, psychological. I'm still waiting for surgery on my face to be reconstructed from the fractures that I had. And, and she is um, still in jail? Yeah. Oh, very much so, yeah. 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 Well, listen, these figures uh, that Five Live Breakfast have obtained, Ian Richards, show the number of women guilty of domestic violence has more than doubled over the last five years. Just briefly, what do you both think that that's down to? Is it the fact that m more people are, like yourselves, talking about this, sticking their heads above the parapet and saying, yes, it does go on? For, for me, I think, certainly whilst reporting is improving, I, I generally do worry about the lack of awareness that men can be victims and that the uh, promotion of the support services is not gender neutral. I generally believe that if we look at the documentation that's out there, the attitudes of society, the police, local providers of services for domestic abuse, it, I think we'll see even more people come forward if that literature is gender neutral. It's still mm. quite heavily flavoured towards females. Still seen by many as a, a problem. Um, Very much so. For, for, for women. Um, Richard, briefly. Yes, I agree with what he's saying. Absolutely 100%. Mm. Um, I had a fortunate... Uh, I was able to get in touch with a company called Stonham, who were a charity that helped support me. My local council didn't want to know. Um, when I went to them and said I need rehousing, they just told me, said, you've got a house, go away, go and live in it. But it was not possible. I feared for my life at that particular time. So uh, I was very lucky. I, I made a phone call to a charity who made a phone call to another charity. Um, basically, I ended up talking to a company called Stonham, and they were absolutely brilliant, although they couldn't help me within the area I lived in, and that's why I moved from down south to up in the Midlands. OK. Well, listen, thank you again, uh, Ian and Richard. Figures obtained by Five Live Breakfast show that the number of women guilty of domestic violence in England and Wales has more than doubled in the last five years. As figures from the Crown Prosecution Service uh, show that 4,000 women were successfully prosecuted last year compared to just under 1,500 uh, women in 2005. Now, the rise is higher than for the number of men Sorry, the rise is higher than for the number of men convicted, although overall men make up 93% of convictions. Carmel Napier is the Chief Constable of Gwent Police and the Association of Chief Police Officers lead on domestic abuse. Good morning. Good morning. Were you surprised to hear that the number of women abusers seems to be rising at a rapid rate? Yeah, I'm surprised, but um, also um, I think it'd be shocking for the public because traditionally women are seen as softers, as as care, you know, softer carers, uh, mothers, and uh, but actually society has changed greatly. We've become more selfish, impatient, uh, pushing boundaries, um, more use of alcohol. Um, and generally, um, we know that for domestic abuse, there's a substantial amount of under-reporting and um, hopefully increase confidence in the police and other agencies being responsible uh, for, for, for more um, domestic abuse and people reporting One it. of the, the criticisms we've heard this morning from men who've suffered this, we heard from, from Ian earlier on who had hot, boiling hot water pour, poured all over him. Uh, you know, it's, it's horrendous what, what people who purportedly mm. l love you will, will, will do to you, whether they be men or whether they be women, and more painfully, people that you love. And he was saying that the, the, the agencies involved at the moment who are out there to help people are not gender neutral. They are too focused on helping women, which is fine, but to, you know, a lot of men are suffering as well. I agree with Ian and uh, my sympathies for Ian and, and the suffering that he's been through. And I think he's right. I think that is something that working with the Home Office and other agencies, we could look to make more uh, gender th neutral. So actually like we're picking up same sex relationships, the elderly too in relationships, disabled etc. And, and I think that is probably the next steps forward as clearly more confidence in reporting to the police has resulted in these increased prosecutions which has got to be a good thing. Another thing which was really interesting that we heard earlier on from uh, an academic to whom we spoke at uh, five past seven, so quite a few people 
listening would uh, would not have been uh, up and around for that. But she was Dr. Nicola Graham uh, Kevin, a psychologist at the University of Central Lancashire, and uh, a, an expert on uh, on female aggression. And she thinks it's uh, in incredibly underreported uh, the the violence of women towards men. Yes, I think it, it may well be because I think there's still a society taboo and a requirement for men to be um, self-sufficient and self-contained and not to disclose uh, such things uh, to their friends, families and, and uh, you know, to the police and other agencies. And so I think perhaps that increased awareness, that gender-neutral aspect of it, would encourage more men to come mm. forward. And she said that if a push is considered domestic violence, which it should be, uh, and, and in, in the terms of the calibration of women who are suffering, so should it be considered if a woman pushes a man? Do you agree with that? Oh, definitely, definitely. And, and we know that actually the, the worst abuse too is that uh, mental uh, control and over-control of, of people and individuals in relationships which result then in that escalation of, of towards violence from the mental torture to the, you know, the violence which is then used. I've got a text here. Res respond to this. Um, um, I was a victim of domestic violence. I was pushed downstairs, punched in the head. I called the police. The two male PCs came. One officer stayed in the house laughing and joking with the partner. The other stayed outside with me. I was arrested and kept in a cell for nearly 24 hours. It was the most horrific experience. Uh, the CPS threw out saying it was a domestic argument. And that's a man feeling it wasn't treated seriously because uh, he was a man. Well, I'm sorry that he feels that way, and uh, you know you've you've given me the brief scenario. But the police service does take domestic abuse very seriously, as does the Crown Prosecution Service. Well, that's your policy, certainly. But I just wonder if, on the ground, occasionally, a couple of male officers might think, oh, "Come on." We do our best to get it right every time, um, at the time, and uh, certainly I know every chief officer's focus is very much on this area of business when it it features such a large part in our violent crime reports. Thank you for talking to us this morning.